Hello, hello. You might remember a couple weeks ago we put out a video called Let's Eat Caviar! And it was a wonderful experience detailing my very first taste of this expensive caviar that I bought. Uh, a food that I've wanted to try for many, many years, um, that I've had a couple times at sushi places on rice as uh, like a, a, a nori? Right? Wait, no? What? Why can't I think of what that's called? You know. Just that on the bed of rice. Oh my gosh. Nigiri. I've had I've had caviar nigiri before, um, but I had never just had plain by itself caviar, um, which uh, generally is like a little higher quality than what you could get at a sushi restaurant. Of course, I love it. I was I was blown away. I had already loved the stuff that I had had at sushi, so this was just another step up in that direction, and I was uh, totally enamored. Um, originally my plan was to eat it like very slowly, um, and to save a lot for friends and family to try, uh, but my city is having a really fun time in a major second wave of COVID, so the amount of friends and family I'm going to be seeing in the near future has, uh, really, really diminished, uh, and I also misunderstood. It says, uh, best before, uh, November 28th. Um, but that refers to it if it's sealed and, and totally airtight and shut. Uh, so the actual um, uh, expiry point for an open container that you've already eaten some of is going to be less than that. So all of this to say, we got to get at it. We got to get through this caviar. So um, I'm going to just try some by itself just to see if I can tell if the taste is changing at all. Um, and just to kind of remind myself of, of all these things that I love about it. And then I've uh, thought of a selection of other foods that I'm going to try eating it with. Some of them I expect to be pretty good. Some of them I expect to taste weird and crazy. Some of them are probably going to be god-awful. But who cares? It's the spirit of adventure. I paid for this. I'm going to do what I bloody well like with it. Uh, gotten a little better at opening it. I have been snacking at it bit by bit, but you can see there's still quite a lot left. You really don't need a lot to feel like you've uh, immersed yourself in this rich, buttery, salty yet sweet, nutty, fragrant, almost fruity, unbelievably decadent, fragile and yet exploding and overpowering. It's still so good. It's still so good. My fears of the taste becoming worse as I, I let it sit in the fridge. Have not come to pass. That is so excellent. I cannot perceive any difference. Maybe if I had somehow eaten the super fresh caviar and the caviar of today back to back, I could tell some contrasting notes or something, but no, I have no complaints whatsoever. Okay, so let's try some pairings, huh? Yeah, all right. First, I'm going to have it with a raspberry. I told you, it's about the spirit of adventure. These are maybe a little overripe. I bought them a little while ago. Um, seems like a good one. No noticeable flaws. Um, let's just eat one by itself, maybe, to kind of set the raspberry flavor in mind. I love a good raspberry. It has a lot of similar qualities to the caviar. Little uh, pearls that burst in your mouth. The slight bit of liquid. Um, a taste that is uh, very strong at first, but then kind of fades away into more subtle notes. Maybe those are the only com commonalities. So I'm just going to take a little caviar. Put it on my raspberry. Mm, the eggs of the mighty sturgeon fished out of the cold Canadian Arctic seas. And a, and a raspberry grown <clears throat> somewhere in California. Together at last. <laughs> I 
Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> it's so terrible. Mm. It's like the strong acidity of the raspberry and then the saltiness of the caviar completely like clashed and canceled each other out. All that was left is this kind of like muddy flavor um, where I couldn't really focus on the caviar taste because it just seemed like somewhat soured and off. I think this is maybe what the caviar will taste like if it goes bad, if I leave it way too long. And the raspberry taste was totally overpowered. Like I couldn't taste anything of the actual unique raspberry flavor. It was just a mess. Okay, so experiment one was a huge failure. And I got to say, that was one of the ones I was more optimistic about. <laughs> that I actually thought might be pretty good. So it's it's all downhill from here. This video might be called just like wasting caviar. Next, we have something that I bought at the same time as I bought the caviar, actually, although it's much, much less cheapy. Cheap, much less expensive. Much less cheapy? What the heck? Did the raspberry and caviar break my brain? This is a white Stilton cheese, uh, which is like a semi firm English cheese with mango and ginger. Doesn't that sound awesome? And guess what? It tastes awesome. I freaking love this stuff. If I go back to this bougie grocery store, I don't know if I'm getting caviar again. Maybe not yet. Got to save up and, and really anticipate it. But I'm definitely going to buy another block of this. It's fantastic. Ooh, it just hits. And you have this, like, immediate, almost, like, buzz of ginger. And the sweetness of the mango isn't overstated. It's more just the mango flavor that you associate with sweetness. And then the cheese is just that perfect level of creaminess where it doesn't like spread the flavors out too much, but just kind of provides a solid base of like full mouthfeel, nice richness. So, you know, ginger is often used at sushi places to cleanse your palate between courses. So, um, therefore putting caviar on this ginger cheese is one of the better ideas I've had. Can you hear those people talking outside? I don't know what they're talking about. It's a very uh, intense conversation, it sounds like, but not an unhappy conversation. So we got... Okay. The ginger flavor is so strong that it beat out the initial notes of the caviar, which is saying a lot, because the initial hit of the caviar when the little eggs burst in your mouth is unbelievably powerful, and yet it lost out. The cheese has a stronger opening. <laughs> um, and then, really, I could mostly just taste the cheese. Even though I put a decent amount of caviar on there, I, uh, I really mostly just taste the ginger, almost like the, the caviar was drowned out by the creaminess, and there was kind of like this muddled mess in the lower notes of the taste, and then all I had was ginger. <laughs> um, so that was not anywhere near as disgusting, but it mostly just tastes like, not the, well, actually the raspberry caviar, it wasn't disgusting, it was just like really, really disappointing. I was disgusted with myself <laughs> that I had tried it. I'm going to eat just a little bit of caviar to, to kind of... Remember what we're fighting for here. <laughs> Remember what we're putting on the table with all these dumbass experiments? All right, what's next? Now, I had made a mistake before with raspberry and caviar. So that made me a little pessimistic about all fruit caviars. 
which is too bad because I had a couple other fruits I was planning on using. Um, but I think a strawberry is maybe a better candidate. It's like sweeter, it's less acidic, um, it has kind of a more mellow flavor overall. As I'm saying it, I feel skeptical. This one's a nice one, but let's eat another one just to be like strawberry, strawberry. Um, these are Ontario grown strawberries. I think they must be very much near the end of the season. Um, I, I love the taste of local strawberries. I think it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, yeah, it's it's very different than like a, a, the big American strawberries, which I also like, but these ones are, are much more flavorful. Not necessarily sweeter, but just more of a strawberry flavor. Mmm. They have this real crunch to them. I just love it. Okay. This is a good one, too. The one I ate was quite like this. I can see this being good. I want this to be good. I really do. Get a decent amount. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, caviar? Yeah? Yeah? We out here? Just, uh, it kind of looks like there's something wrong with the strawberry. <laughs> or maybe it looks like you're trying to dip it in chocolate, but there's something really strange about the chocolate. Anyways. <laughs> what did I think would happen? <laughs> It's not as bad as the raspberry. In my mind, there's like this beautiful, like, contrasting vortex of flavors that could happen. This, this bright, rainbow-colored, multifaceted, glimmering mirror within mirror, where, where the, the light of the fruit casts this, this deep, mysterious ocean flavor of the caviar in sharp contrast. And, and each of them just explode like fireworks in your mind. Um, but no, again, <laughs> the acidity of the fruit really makes a weird combination with the saltiness of the caviar. And it's, it's just a mess. Um, so that's another mistake. Probably no more fruit. I was going to do kiwi and peaches originally too, but I cannot imagine that being good. Oh, but I do have another idea. Okay, now you might think, Keith, haven't you been drunk the whole time? No, I'm actually totally sober when making all of these terrible decisions. But, never too late to change. So this is soju, it's a Korean liquor that I am a big, big fan of. Um, I think it's like a very concentrated rice wine. Um, it's 12%, which is, you know, stronger than wine, but not as strong as liquor. Usually it's flavored. This is peach flavor. Um, I also have apple and yogurt, but I think peach would be best. I had blueberry before, but I drank all of that. Um, I don't mean to suggest I'm like a heavy drinker or something. Drinking isn't cool, kids. Don't drink at all, ever. <laughs> no, nah, I don't know. All things in moderation. At any rate, my, my point is that I, I do really enjoy soju, so I, I often have a bit at hand. Um, so we're going to... Uh, what's the plan here? I have heard, we'll try this after. Okay, sorry, I got. I came up with another idea just as I was talking. But we'll pour ourselves like a little shot. Give it a sniff. Smells like peach, but also smells like alcohol. And I think the plan is to, um, let, let me look up something quick. So, I've heard of vodka being paired with caviar a lot, right? Um, so you don't... You do it to, like, cleanse your palate between caviar tastings, apparently. Um, serve it chilled. 
So I guess you eat the caviar and then you drink the vodka. So I'm going to eat the caviar and then drink the soju. Does that make sense? I could put the caviar in the soju, but that that really seems like a terrible idea. Uh, all right. We'll get a little caviar here. It's a little caviar. Okay. Hmm. Hmm, it's not bad. Because the caviar flavor quite lingers a bit, you know, it's like a very rich flavor that your your mouth remembers for quite a while. And then to to have the Taste of the alcohol kind of cuts through that with a little bit of sweetness, the peach flavor. Um, it, it kind of heightens some aspects of it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It wasn't so bad. It was kind of cool. But it really made me see the potential of this, this vodka after caviar. So maybe we'll save that for the finale. Um, I think that could maybe go well. I think I have some vodka somewhere. I guess we'll find out. Uh, here's another one that everything I've done so far would suggest is going to be terrible, but I'm going to plunge ahead anyways. These are some kind of bougie gummies um, from a company called Squish, which makes bougie gummies. Uh, they're really, really good. I'm a huge fan of uh, these ones in particular, the sour grapefruit and blood orange gummies. Some of my favorite gummies that I've ever had, but everything I've had from there has been at least quite good. Um, I got these a while ago. As you can see, they're almost done, but... We're gonna caviar and candy. I, I'm sure there's someone out there that has been like rampaging around their room, smashing bottles and upending desks and being like this Keats the idiot <laughs> is ruining the good name of caviar. And and as they pause their Eric Andre as the destructive rampage and glance back at the screen and see me putting caviar on this this little facsimile of a grapefruit slice. <laughs> I'm sure I'm gonna come and just punch out their monitor. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're doing it anyway. <laughs> Am I a smart person? No, but you know, I feel like maybe nobody's ever done this before, so that's kind of cool. Mm. Oh, oh, by far the worst one yet. Oh, by far the worst one yet. We're not going to do any more candy. I had another couple kind of bougie gummies and some Japanese gummies and stuff that I was like, mm, maybe it could be good. I, I don't know. I'm like losing the mental image that convinced me that this would be good. It's terrible. It just turned into this like sludge in my mouth that tasted neither like caviar nor the gummies. Just like with the fruit, especially the raspberry, even more so than the raspberry, there was like a canceling out of flavors um, that just left it being like a very flavorless mush until at the very end, all I could taste was this, this influx of like a chemical sourness, which just must be like one of the actual chemicals they had to make it taste sour. Um, that was really all I tasted throughout the experience. And the rest of the time, all I tasted was the, the, the taste of wasted money. <laughs> Biggest failure yet. I, I, I don't know how much further we can go downhill, but we're going to find out. All right. Here we have some Hagen dazs chocolate peanut butter. Should I get a non another spin?
this point, I, I'm genuinely wondering, what the hell has my life come to? What is this? What does it mean? How does it reflect upon my engagement with society? So I'm going to get a little bit of peanut butter, a little bit of the chocolate ice cream. Um, this is like my favorite haagen flavor. I think this is absolutely fantastic. It's just sweet and salty. It's peanut buttery. It's smooth. It's rich. Um, the chocolate part is great. The peanut butter part is even better. It's supremely indulgent and probably overpriced, but that's haagen -Dazs. Okay. Do, do, do. I'm going to clean this plastic spoon off again because it's getting a bit of ice cream on it. All right. Bon appétit. Hey, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. But the caviar did very little. Um, I think because it was already salty, it just kind of blended into the, the peanut butter taste. And uh, there wasn't really a whole lot of like of the like the sea taste or like the, the kind of special creaminess of caviar. Like I couldn't really feel the texture of the caviar. It just kind of all melted together. Um, so it just very slightly enhanced my haagen experience, which is still cool because I love this ice cream and that scoop I loved especially much, but not, not, you know, uh, there's just so much else you're missing out on from the caviar. So much else just got lost in the mix, but at least it wasn't like fighting, you know, at least, um, it was a complimentary flavor closer to the cheese. All right, now we're gonna eat a century egg with caviar. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. I still have these, by the way. I can't give them away. I don't want to eat another one. It was, the aftermath was too unpleasant. It just gave me bad smelling gas for a long time. Alright, this is probably another stupid one, but I'm kind of running out of ideas. <laughs> Just probably a good sign that I should quit, but I want to hit more successes. So far, the tier list is like uh, soju number one, probably uh, ice cream number two. Like, the, the ice cream wasn't that great, though. I want something else that I'm like, damn, that hits. So, <laughs> blueberry jam. Uh, I, I don't really foresee this working out, but, you know, it'll be a little different than the other fruit ones, at least, I think, because it's already processed, so a lot of the acidity and stuff is gone, and it's more just, like, sweetness and concentrated flavor, so maybe I can finally achieve that, like, fruity, salty contrast that I've been hoping for. Okay can't really even see where the blueberry ends and the caviar begins, but... Yeah, it's not... It's not as bad as the other fruit experiments. You can taste the blueberry a lot more, but it's not like they're really contrasting off of each other, the caviar taste and the blueberry taste. It's more just that you're kind of like awkwardly tasting both, and it's like... Mm. No car. Um, okay, what else we got? I've heard people often serve caviar, or not often, but I've seen a particular dish that's like a hard-boiled egg topped with caviar. 
I don't feel like boiling eggs though. That would that would take too long. I guess I could have prepped a little better. Let me let me have a little look look, look around. See if I can uh, spot any potential winners. All right, we got some uh, yogurt. This is uh, Mediterranean yogurt, so it's like very thick, a little sour, um, quite uh, not sweet. Not too much. I'm just gonna take the yogurt part. There's strawberry at the bottom, but I just want a bit of yogurt, caviar yogurt. You know, lots of stuff goes in yogurt. Both fruit and coffee goes in yogurt, so why not caviar? Surely caviar is somewhere in the middle of the uh, fruit coffee dichotomy. Okay. Mm, it has the same sort of problem as the ice cream, but the caviar taste just sublimates way too well into the uh, yogurt. So it tasted good, but it just kind of tasted like kind of extra creamy, extra savory, extra delicious yogurt, and not something that's like discernibly caviar. So honestly, I can't even say it's disappointing because I thought it would be worse, but it's not great either. Hmm. Running out. Okay, hear me out. Mayonnaise is made out of eggs. Caviar is fish eggs. Therefore, you know... Mm. Oh, just eating the caviar by itself is so good. I'm gonna have a little bit more by itself. Just to bolster my courage before we attempt whatever the hell this is gonna be. I love it so much. Okay. All right. It's maybe one of the dumber things I've done, like, in my life, which is, you know, that's saying a lot. La, la, la. Okay. Small amount of caviar, because I'm not going to waste a lot on this. I'm going to squirt some out on the plate just by itself to make sure it's, like, coming out of the bottle at the rate I expect. Okay. Like, I love mayonnaise. I friggin' love this stuff. Japanese Q-Pie mayonnaise. I'll put it on pretty much anything, you know? So why not a little cabbie, cabbie mayo? Caviar and mayo. Oh, that kind of hits! Oh, shit, that kind of hits! Oh! Oh, I think that's what we were waiting for! Okay, okay. Okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We gotta, we're gonna scale it up a little bit, because that was, it was all, it was over way too fast. But that was actually pretty good. I, I think I might have had a good idea for once in this, the last half hour. So we bought these crackers to eat them, the caviar on. Because a lot of things had said to eat caviar on crackers and not just by itself. But honestly, I like it by itself better than on the cracker. Um, so I, I skipped that during our, our little experiments today. But I think this will make it a lot easier to uh, actually make this dish. This dish that I have just invented of uh, cavi mayo. So we're going to take like a healthy amount of caviar this time. World is ending anyways, so... Who am I saving this for? Even a little more. Why not a little more? It's only eighty dollars. <laughs> it's only eighty dollars. 
Oh boy, okay. Alright. These are healthy amount of caviar. Now we use the trusty mayonnaise. Give that a little squirt. There we go. Nobody should have let me have this much money. What was society thinking letting me have this much money? <laughs> Who pays me? Why are they paying me? <laughs> Alright, ready? Ready? We're gonna eat it. Mm. Oh man, I am the greatest genius that ever lived. I am the greatest genius that ever lived. It's really good. I think this must be why it was served with the boiled egg at that one place. Because um, like the, the creaminess here doesn't fight with the creaminess of the caviar. It's not like two different types of creaminess. It's just the same creaminess. So the caviar flavor spreads across the entire like richness of the mayonnaise. You can still feel the, the unique, one-of-a-kind texture of caviar kind of amongst it. Um, there's like a very slight edge to the mayonnaise flavor. It's a little more sour than, um, than caviar. So that just kind of like heightens the whole experience. It kind of like activates the taste a little more, I would say. Such that I, I genuinely feel like I kind of appreciate parts of the caviar flavor a little more. It's not strictly better. I'm certainly not going to spend the rest of my caviar eating it with mayonnaise. Damn, I thought this was going to be like one of the biggest joke ones. But it, it fucking hits, dude. Okay, I'm going to have another one. There's, this is unreal. This is un freaking real. I, I might have actually... I'm going to Google it. Caviar mayonnaise. It's not even auto suggesting. Oh wait, no, I guess it is. I wasn't spelling mayonnaise right. Caviar. Okay, there's a lot of recipes for caviar mayonnaise. So, you know, I uh, I independently discovered it though. <laughs> yeah, I independently discovered it. At least. <laughs> These are some bougie, bougie-ass recipe sites I'm finding here. Ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> Caviar. <laughs> so this exists. This is like a thing. Here, you eat it on egg. You know. All right, so it is a thing. It is a thing. I'm not... Uh, God damn, that looks good. All right, well... I'm still, I'm still plenty happy with myself. Somehow, in desperate times, after all the ones I thought would be good were kind of bad or eh, we stumbled upon a hit. An established hit. That's like if you were noodling around on your guitar... And and you just like didn't know what you were playing or anything, and then suddenly you were like da 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 da, and you're like ooh that's pretty good oh shit ooh, and then and then you uh, you somehow have never heard Beethoven's Ninth in your entire life, and then you're watching TV or something and it plays in a movie because it's in like every movie, and you're like oh okay. That's how I felt. It's equally good. Beethoven's Ninth Movement for Choral, also known as the Joy to the World Sonata, and Caviar and Mayonnaise. Equally good. Not Joy to the World. What the heck? What? What's it called? What? What the? What? Oh my god, am I losing my friggin' mind? Is this even tasty? What, what is happening? 
Ode to Joy. What the fuck? What the fuck? Joy to the World is a Christmas song. Oh, man. Oh, this Cavi Mayo is, is doing something to my brain. All right. Okay. We got our caviar. Now we'll... We'll hit the mayo. You just, you gotta love watching a master in action, you know? I'm like Gordon Ramsay up in here. Before I ate it like this, I wanna eat it like. It friggin' hits though. It's so good. See, all these scrubs on here, though, they probably aren't using q -Pie Japanese mayonnaise. It even has an S because it's the super mayonnaise. Oh, man. <laughs> all right. I've earned this. No, I haven't. So, I think this is going to be the end of our caviar pairing adventure. Maybe I'll do another round. I'll actually look into some stuff that tastes good with caviar and not just uh, rummage around my kitchen for whatever uh, whatever strikes my fancy. I'm a little disappointed that I couldn't pull off some weird fruit caviar explosion thing, but uh, caviar mayo kind of hit. So now we're going to finish it off with uh, something that is like a real thing. We got some Prince Igor vodka. I bought this because it's a bit more alcoholic than the other vodkas. And I just wanted to use it for like a chemical extraction thing. I didn't even buy this to drink it. <laughs> I just needed something with a really high alcohol contact that you could drink um, in order to, well, whatever. I was doing some stuff. Um, should I, eh, it's just water, it's fine. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wipe it off. I don't, I don't want to take any chances on messing this up because I'm not going to drink another shot of vodka. <laughs> it's just been chilling in my freezer. <clears throat> and the article I read said to serve the vodka with the caviar very cold. It's good. <laughs> it's been in my freezer for like two years, by the way. <laughs> We're not heavy drinkers around here, by any means. I really want to make sure I'm not giving that impression. I'm definitely not a heavy drinker. Um, but, you know, there's occasions, like when you've already paired caviar with raspberry and you're questioning the choices you've made in life, where uh, it's, it's nice to have some vodka around. Okay, I got a nice healthy spoonful here. We're going to eat it. Savor it a little bit, and then just when it feels like the taste is fading, I'm going to knock back this vodka. Mmm. Oh, man. Oh, ho. Oh man, that was pretty cool. That was quite the rush. It's like the caviar flavor, and then it it takes off again, but in kind of like a different direction. Woof. Okay. All right. That's enough. It's enough bad decisions. I, I uh, yeah, that was pretty strong. Um. Uh, I would recommend it with vodka. I think that was like strictly better than the sochu. It was like the same experience, but um, just harder, harsher, faster, stronger, more Daft Punkian. So that that was good. I can see why people do that. Caviar and vodka, caviar and mayonnaise. Mmm, excellent. I'm a genius. Just because I wasn't the first genius doesn't mean I'm a 
not a genius. And uh, everything else was like disappointing to outright terrible. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm glad I didn't try like kiwi or peach. I think those would have been bad. Let's have just a little bit more caviar just to, uh, to celebrate surviving this video. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. All right. Goodbye. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> oh, it's so freaking good.